A patient is scheduled for radiographic examination which of following x-ray component it is responsible for generating the x-ray photon. The answer would be anode. Now why anode? So in an x-ray tube an anode it is responsible for generating the x-ray photons. So when a high energy electrons so suppose electrons from the cathode they strike the anode so when high energy electron from cathode they strike the anode they interact with the target material in the anode producing producing the x-ray photon So think of cathode as a as a water tap. So this water tap would release a stream of tiny particles that are known as known as electrons. So similar to how a tap that releases water when you turn it on. The filament it is the filament is like a heating element in old style light bulb. So it is it is responsible for producing. So it is responsible for producing these electrons when it gets heated, like how the filament in the light bulbs, it gets hot and it produces light. So a node, uh, you can consider it like a like a target board when the throw arrows when you throw arrows at this board it will produce a flash of lights so in case of x-ray the electrons uh, that were relieved from cathode they hit the node when they hit they produce x-rays so the node it is the x-ray component that is responsible for generating x-ray photons so when high energy electrons from cathode they strike the anode, X-rays are produced through interaction with uh, the material. So that is why your uh, the component that is responsible for generating X-ray photon it's the anode. So answer would be anode. Moving to next question, in which of in which interaction uh, b between X-ray and matter is the incident X-ray photon completely absorbed resulting in ejection of electron from inner shell of uh, atom. So it's it's the photoelectric effect. So you can uh, you can so imagine you have a you have a small closed box with a tiny window inside the box and there is a bouncing ball so the bouncy ball it will represents the inner shell electron So you have a larger bowl in your hand. So if you throw a big bowl, that is the that would be the X-ray photon at the window. It hits the window and it it bounces back. So that represents scattering or no interaction. Now throw big ball harder. So this time when it hits the window, the window will open and the inner ball, uh, this inner ball will get out of, out of the box. 
so this is like the photoelectric effect so the x-ray photon so the big ball it is absorbed and it kicks the inner shell electron out of its place whereas the compton effect would be if you uh, if you throw the big ball uh, really really hard at the window it break the window and the piece and the pieces that may fall out so in in the photoelectric effect the x ray photon will give all its energy to the innermost shell of the atom just like throwing the big ball with enough force to open the window and send the bouncy ball flying so in the photoelectric effect an x ray photon gives its energy to the inner shell electron uh, that causes it to leave from the uh, leave the atom so that's the that's the photoelectric effect uh, the interaction between between the x rays and matter involving the scattering of x ray photons without a change in wavelength it's the coherent scattering also known as thomson scattering so uh, you can remember this by imagine in a quiet room with friends you both whisper to each other let let's here is my friend and there is other there are two friends uh, the your friend whispers softly to you and you whisper back a uh, softly using the same words so the x ray photon here uh, would enter the atom whisper back by sending the x ray photon in a different direction but but still the same x ray photon but it's the same x ray photon just like in your quiet conversation nothing changes the words so the x ray uh, photon it keeps its original energy and it does not change its wavelength so that will be the best example of of the coherent scattering what is bremsstrong radiation so bremsstrong radiation refers to electromagnetic radiation emitted when charged particles such as electrons they are accelerated or decelerated by electric field of atomic nuclei so imagine you have a fast moving car on the road and suddenly uh, you see a traffic and you apply brakes so as the car slow down uh, that means it will decelerate rapidly that releases energy in form of sound uh, like uh, like screeching sounds you can uh, notice due to these are sounds that are produced due to the brakes in same way when fast moving electrons it comes to positive charge in nucleus of atom they slow down and uh, during this uh, dec uh, during this uh, deceleration they emit they will emit x ray radiation so these radiation they are known as bremsstrong long radiation so that is why answer would be b now which lesions does not commonly uh, represents a soft bubble or honeycomb appearance uh, the answer would be fibrous dysplasia fibrous dysplasia does not have a uh, presents with a soap bubble appearance or honeycomb appearance they appear 
as a ground glass appearance so this this appearance uh, would be uh, would be ground glassy or cloudy pattern on the radiograph so the uh, the bone you will see here would be hazy poorly defined and somewhat granular appearance and it does not represents the resembles the saw bubble or honeycomb appearance now what is honeycomb appearance or saw bubble appearance the saw bubble radiolucency it refers to the radiographic pattern when there are multiple when you will see uh, when you will see multiple so when you will see multiple round or irregular shaped dark areas that are seen seen with the well defined borders so that represents a saw bubble in a soapy solution uh, so the translucent area they are typically larger and may have a irregular shape so th they may represent large cystic or fluid filled spaces within the tissue whereas the honeycomb appearance it is characterized by a small uniform round translucent area that are closed packed together just like the cells of honeycomb uh, the honeycomb pattern they are typically smaller and more uniform in size they are separated by thin bony partition or septa so your answer would be uh, in which lesion does not present with the saw bubble or honeycomb appearance uh, the uh, fibrous dysplasia where ground glass appearance is seen uh, when should bite wing first be obtained for typical child well we know the bite wing they are most commonly bite wings we know they are commonly used in dentistry uh, to assess the contact points between the adjacent and detect any cavities so in order to uh, obtain accurate bite wing it is necessary to wait until there are until there are stabilized contacts between the posterior teeth which of following is the least radio sensitive organ in field of typical dental x-ray well the organs of high sensitivity they are lymphoid organs gonads bone marrow and intestine and the medium sensitivity they are skin growing bone connective tissues kidney liver and thyroid so out of them the answer would be d uh, the tissues that are of least sensitivity they are brain muscles spinal so remember the muscles and nerve cells they are of lee sensitivity whereas lymphocytes spermatogonia erythroblast they are of high sensitivity there are several methods for obtaining radiograph information in patient who has a limited mouth opening due to trismus Uh, which of following method would be best well the panoramic radiograph they are obtained using a panoramic x-ray machine so this machine would provide a wide view of entire mouth including the upper and lower jaws teeth and supporting structures all in one image so the mouth does not need to be opened wide for this type of x-ray uh, which would mate make it suitable for individual with the limited mouth opening or with the trismus uh option lateral cephalometry uh, well uh, well the this uh, cephalometry it is primarily used for the orthodontic and orthognathic surgery assessment and treatment planning so it is just a side profile of the patient face including skull jaw and soft tissue 
so that allows the orthodontist to assess the relation and alignment of facial bone and the teeth so the best answer here would be panoramic film uh, when the frankfurt plane it is tipped up while taking a panoramic image the image obtained will show a square of mandible and palate superimposed over maxillary teeth so the answer would be maxillary teeth here so this is option a b c and d so the frankfurt plane it is an imaginary plane that is ensure that patient head it is properly positioned if it is tilted upward it can affect the alignment of x ray causing the lower jaw and the upper jaw to appear as they are square off and overlap each other in the x ray according to the basic principle of paralleling technique the film it is placed uh, the film should be placed so this one is the paralleling technique the film it is placed parallel to long axis of the tooth the central ray of x ray it is directed so this central x ray it is directed perpendicular to film and long axis of teeth so this is the uh, paralleling technique so answer is parallel and perpendicular a 25 years old male reported with missing maxillary canine so you can see in this uh there is missing a canine canine is here and you can see this radiolucency with the borders that are attached to cemento enamel junction of impacted canine uh so the most probable diagnosis could be it is dentigerous well it is dentigerous cyst so we know that dentigerous cyst they are formed around the crown of impacted or unerupted teeth in this case it is likely that maxillary canine it does not it not uh, properly erupt and it it will become impacted that would lead to formation of dentigerous cyst uh during the preoperative treatment planning of implant in edentulous patient panoramic uh, uh, radiograph it would provide so panoramic uh, radiography it would provide uh, information on the position of the inferior alveolar canal when placing a implant in the edentulous uh, individual so that is a, a critical information because the position of the inferior alveolar nerve inferior alveolar canal it determines the uh, location of inferior alveolar nerve so avoiding damage to this nerve it is essential during the implant placement to prevent the sensory distribution in the lip and the chin area a 25 year old patient he meets with accident and presented with swelling on the right side of face and he was unable to move the mandible laterally the radiograph examination would include which of following so the panoramic images would be the answer that would uh, provide a better and broader view of the entire maxillofacial region so this one uh, figure is the panoramic imaging Uh, that can help to identify fracture dislocation uh, and other injuries to the jaw and facial bone it is useful to assess the overall condition of mandible and adjacent structure in case of trauma
नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन विच टाइप ऑफ रेडियोग्राफ शो कॉन्डाइलर हेड ओरिएंटेशन एंड फेशियल ए सिमेट्री इट्स द ओ पी जी ओ पी जी इट इज ऑर्थोपेंटोग्राम इट इज ऑल्सो नोन एज पेनोरामिक रेडियोग्राफ दैट प्रोवाइड्स अ व्यू ऑफ इंटायर मैगजिलो फेशियल रीजन इंक्लूडिंग कॉन्डाइलर हेड्स ऑफ द मैंडिबल and useful for orientation of the condylar heads and can help to identify the facial asymmetry due to difference in the condylar region the x-ray shows a tennis racket radiographic lines of posterior mandible so this uh, tennis racket radio opaque lines it is typically associated with odontogenic ऑडोंटोजेनिक मिक्सोमा सो दीज रेडियोग्राफिक फाइंडिंग्स दे आर सीन ऑन डेंट डेंटल एक्सरेज दैट आर करेक्टर करेक्टराइज बाय फाइन curvy linear calcification that resembles a string of a uh, racket patient visited a dental clinic with a complaint of swelling in the mandibular region on radiograph it shows a onion peel appearance so a onion peel appearance it is typically associated with the osteomyelitis so gary's osteomyelitis it is a type of chronic osteomyelitis that leads to uh, reactive new bone formation so this this appearance is known as onion peel appearance so that results as response to the chronic infection or irritation in the jaw bone so this onion skin appearance it results from the thickening of the periosteum and the formation of alternating radio opaque light and radio uh, radio opaque dark and radio lucent layers on the bone surface so that creates a laminated appearance which of following is characteristic uh, radiographic feature of osteosarcoma so the feature so imagine looking at a x ray of bone affected by osteosarcoma you can see uh, instead of smooth or normal bone structure you would see something like rays of light they are radiating outwards from central point just like rays of sun so this sun burst pattern it is a hallmark of it is a hallmark of the osteosarcoma so this uh, sun burst appearance is due to the aggressive and destructive nature of osteosarcoma where the cancellous bone cells they grow rapidly and disrupt the normal bone structures a male visited to the dental clinic following the road traffic accident if you are suspecting a bilateral condylar fracture the best uh, projection would be the opg the radiographic characteristic unique local radio lucency they are seen in all of following except except on the answer is giant cell granuloma uh, it is not typically characterized by unilocular radio lucency it presents as multi local radio lucency it is a non neoplastic lesion a patient with a chief complaint of reddish discoloration of maxillary left central incisor has a history of trauma so periapical radio radiograph show a small radio lucent uh see in the pulp chamber so this one this condition is uh, it is internal resorption so in response to the inflammation or irritation specialized cells called osteoclast they become activated 
तो ऑफ्टोग्लाफ्ट वुड ब्रेक डाउन द बोन और डिजॉर्व द बोन सो द ऑफ्टोग्लाफ्ट दे स्टार्ट शू डिजॉर्व द डेंटीन फ्रॉम विद इन द पल्प चैम्बर अलॉन्ग द इनर वॉल्स ऑफ द रूट केनाल सो वाइड फॉर्म विद इन द टूथ सो कैविटी दैट इज क्रिएटेड बाय ऑफ्टोक्लास्टिक एक्टिविटी इट इज दैन फिल्ड विद द ग्रेनुलेशन टिश्यू दैट इज कॉम्बिनेशन ऑफ इन्फ्लामेटरी सेल्स एंड ब्लड सेल्स सो दिस टिश्यू कैन बी सीन एज अ पिंकिश ह्यू विद इन द कैविटी ऑन रेडियोग्राफिक इमेज सो ट्रोमा टू टूथ such as blow to mouth can damage the pulp tissue leading to inflammation and subsequent uh, subsequent resorption so the answer is internal resorption so given the patient history and radiographic finding internal resorption is the most likely explanation for the symptoms and the radiographic appearance a 20 year female patient radiograph show a radiolucent area surrounded by apices of mandibular anterior teeth which are vital so the answer would be uh, periapical cemental dysplasia so this condition is characterized by changes in the bone near the tooth apices that leads to radiolucent area the teeth involved are vital it is more common in females and mandibular anterior region whereas this condense condensing of tear tissue is seen as appears as dense area around the tooth apices and not the radiolucent area whereas a and b they can occur in non vital teeth a diacom a standard recognize, recognize which of following so diacom it is a special language for medical images so when your chest x ray is taken it is saved in the form of diacom images or diacom format so the answer would be c so diacom ensure that the medical devices like x ray machine ct scan mri machine they can talk to each other it's like it is just like making sure everyone is speaking the same language so that uh, they can work together uh, seamlessly so diacom it makes it possible for your x ray and other medical images to be shared read and understood by different doctors and equipment no matter where you go for medical care so necessity for sharing information between imaging uh, devices would be your answer what is advantage of ccd imaging over psp dental imaging uh so when patient it undergo x ray in a dental office using a ccd or cmos sensor the image is kept electrically electronically and immediately sent to computer screen so the dental professional he can view and assess the x ray image for diagnostic purpose whereas the uh, psp dental imaging in which a phosphor plate it is used to capture the x ray image after the x ray exposure the phosphor plate it needs to be removed from patient mouth and processed in a special reader to reveal the image so this processing steps take time and can result in delay before the image it is available for the review so the advantage of ccd dental imaging is immediate image acquisition and display so that is that is your answer the higher rate of cell division and differentiation of hemopoietic stem cells account for higher incidence of the leukemia leukemia it is a type of cancer that affects the blood and bone marrow 
So here you will see uncontrolled production of which cells? WBC. In the early stages of development, so these cells would divide rapidly and abnormally, abnormally. So that would lead to higher incidence of leukemia. So answer would be leukemia. Uh, what is the recommended treatment to regain function of muscles and mastication after radiation? It's the exercise program. So the radiation therapy, it can lead to inflammation and fibrosis of in the head and neck region affecting the muscles of mastication uh, and cause limitation in the mouth opening and muscle function. So uh, we recommend exercise programs and physical therapy to help the patient improves in the muscle function, reduce the inflammation and enhance the range of motion. So that if done uh, uh, to reduce the inflammation improve the muscle function Which of following radiographic view is known as occipital mental projection? It's the PA view maxilla, also known as Waters view. So that is commonly used to view the maxillary sciences. During cell division, which phase is least sensitive to radiation? The answer would be S phase. Among the phases of cell cycle, the S phase is least uh, sensitive to radiation. The order of uh, the sensitivity order is M phase, that is G2, G1 and S phase. So S phase, remember it is least sensitive to irradiation so during the s phase uh, the dna synthesis and replication they are ongoing the making cells less vulnerable to radiation damage compared to, compared to the other phases the emulsion component of x-ray film it is made up of it is made up of silver bromide so the sil emulsion it have two principal component uh, silver halide grains and vehicle matrix so silver halide it is primary silver bromide The parameter of CBCT uh, that determines the number of shades of gray available to display the attenuation, it's the bit, uh, it's the bit depth. Imagine you are coloring a picture and you have, uh, you have a set of crayons with different shade of grays. So if you have only a few shades, your picture might look less detailed, but you have many shades, you can add more suitable differences making your picture more accurate and lifelike. So in CBCT bit depth, it works similarly. A higher bit depth means there are more shade of gray available to represent the different density in the scanned area. So that will make the image more detailed. So that would help uh, that would allow the uh, healthcare professional to see and analyze the structure uh, uh, structures more precisely. So a higher bit depth, it is generally better for creating high quality CBCT images. So the answer would be A. So which of following is a function of lead foil backing in the X-ray film? 
The answer is all of the above. Well, the function of the lead foiling uh, backing in X-ray film is to shield the film from the scattered radiation. So, it primarily serves as shield to protect the X-ray film from the scattered radiation. Scattered radiation it can result from the interaction of the X-ray beam with the patient body or other objects. So the lead foil, so this lead foil would act as a, a barrier to minimize the impact of scattered radiation on the film. Reducing patient exposure while the lead foil itself does not directly reduce the patient exposure. Its role in shielding the film from scattered radiation indirectly contributes to the reducing the patient exposure. Uh, yes, the image quality is also improved by uh, minimizing the effect of scattered radiation and other external factors that can enhance the image quality. So answer here would be all of the above. Uh, moving to the next question. The fastest, uh, the fastest dental film with speed ranging of F so the speed ranging from F film, uh, it has a speed range of the fastest dental film with a speed ranging of X has speed of 48 to 96 round tons. So remember the C film, it has a range of 6 to 12 round tons. The D film it has range of 12 to 24 wrong tons. E speed uh, it has speed of 24 to 8 and F is the fastest one having 48 to 96. So your answer would be C here. So a faster film would require less radiation to create an image. So a faster films they require less radiation that means the patient they are exposed to lower dose of ionizing radiation during the dental x-ray procedure. With F films the dental practitioner can often use shorter exposure time that is advantageous as it reduces the risk of patient movement during the exposure that results in sharper and clearer image. Apart from that there would be less radiations. Uh, they can still provide high quality images. The next question, when X-ray interacts with the outer shell electron of atom, it causes ionization and scattering in different direction. So that is, that is the Compton effect. We have already discussed before uh, how to remember the Compton, Thompson and the photoelectric effect. So the quantum uh, scatter, it occurs when the photon, it interacts with the free electron or loosely bound valency shell electron. The energy, they are transferred to the electron and photon is scattered in the different direction. In the photoelectric effect, the interaction occurs with the bound electrons. Whereas here, it is interaction with the free electrons. Uh, moving to next question, a 25 years old male in your clinic with multiple carrier teeth, after clinical examination you have decided to do full mouth radiograph survey. How many radiographs they are required for full mouth examination? Uh, the answer would be C, 4 bite wings and 17 periapical films. So bite wings they are used to visualize the interproximal caries and assessing the height of the alveolar bone. Periapical radiograph they are used for assessing the overall health of the teeth and sporting structure. So this combination of 4 bite wing and 17 periapical film it is the minimum required for full mouth survey. Uh, radiographic examination shows circular radiolucency around the apex of the mandibular central incisors. So
so the tooth it is vital and asymptomatic so the answer would be uh, the answer would be periapical uh, the answer would be cementoma so it is seen generally in the anterior region uh, the teeth are often radiolucent uh, you will see a radiolucency near the periapical region of the mandibular anterior teeth the teeth they are uh, generally vital and asymptomatic endodontic procedure involving taking multiple radiograph how should you protect yourself or staff while taking radiograph if there are no barrier available to stand behind so while taking radiograph in endodontic procedure if there is no barrier available to stand behind it is important to stand at least at least 6 feet 6 feet away in area that lies at angle of 90 to 135 degree to the x ray beam so this position helps to reduce the radiation exposure to yourself or your staff during the radiographic procedure apart from that you can use the fi- uh, faster films like e films or f films for reduced uh, uh, radiation exposure uh, the next question what is the error in exposure of this film so the film shown shows the incorrect film placement for the molar bite wing what is error in this film so here you can see is a cone cut so this this region is cone cut so it occurs when the x ray cone it is not properly aligned with the film sensor so that can lead to cone cut so it may not provide a clear view of the dental structure uh that is the cone cut uh the arrow indicates so this one is the median palatine suture that is a line of union between two half of the palatal bone in midline of the root of the mouth uh added added filtration in the dental x-ray tube head so the answer is it results in more penetrating uh, useful beam so added filtration in dental x-ray machine in path of x-ray beam it provides uh, between the collimator and tube head seals uh, this additional filtration it serves to filter out the filter out the short wavelength exe from the beam that that in turn results in more penetrating useful beams so that is why d is correct bimolar technique it is given to which of following view of jaw it is given for the uh, lateral oblique view of the jaw so bimolar it is the term used for the radiographic projection showing oblique lateral view of right and left side of the jaw on different half of the same radiograph so this technique it is used to capture both sides of jaw in a single radiograph while protecting one side from excessive radiation using a lead shield so remember the bimolar it is also known as cardner view so that is used to capture lateral oblique view of right and left side of the in same radiograph so uh, you have to give two exposure the first exposure and the second exposure in first exposure the cash uh, the cassette it is placed so that one side of patient face it covers half of the cassette with the nodes pointing towards the midline the x ray Uh, had it is position to capture the designed area and first exposure is taken after the first exposure is completed the lead shield it is placed over the other side of cassette 
to protect the part of film that has already been exposed. The patient is then repositioned with the cassette held on the other side of face and x-ray tube it is repositioned and hence a second exposure is taken. So that technique allow for simultaneous imaging of both the sides of jaw while protecting the unexposed portion of film with the leg shield during the second exposure. So that is the bimolar technique. The best a view to visualize the zygomatic arches it's the it's the zug handle view so this view it is used to visualize the zygomatic arches and it is a underexposed submental vertex view the occipital mental view that is uh, used to visualize the occipital bone and the chin region OPG is not the answer. Skull PA, it is the posterior anterior view of the skull. Coming to the next question, MC Queen Dell technique, it is also known as it is also known as a transpharyngeal technique. Transpharyngeal technique, or it is known as MC Pharma MC Queen projection. So the transpharyngeal view, it is used for the visualization of the superior portion of the condyle and it is used uh, for uh, looking at the arthritic changes such as rheumatoid arthritis or in cases with the degenerative joint disease in the temporomandibular uh, joints. So the here, here the cassette it is placed against the side of the patient uh, head parallel to the sagittal plane. So this technique it is used for detailed imaging of TMJ, uh, especially the superior surface of the condyle. A radiograph showing 40 years old female revealed a radiolucent area around several of her uh, mandibular teeth all were uh, uh, tested vital on electronic pulp test this, so this area would represent the periapical osteopeptosis so it is a condition in which there are radiolucent area in bone surrounding the teeth uh, showing no sign of pulpal involvement or infection so the answer would be answer would be yeah so these are the radiolucent area of the pulpal osteofibroma you can see the answer would be b uh, a cropped opg image a cropped opg image of 25 year old male it is suggestive of it is suggestive of localized so uh, aggressive periodontitis vertical loss of the alveolar brown bone around the first molar and incisors beginning around the puberty in otherwise healthy teenager it is a characteristic diagnostic feature of localized aggressive periodontitis so in the radiograph you will see a r-shaped loss of alveolar bone extended from the distal surface of second premolar to the mesial surface of the second molar so moving to the next question, the ghost image in a panoramic image with reference to particular anatomic structures has following typical properties. So this one image represents the ghost image. So you can see uh, uh, the, the right earrings. These are the right earrings and this one is the left earring. So on on the panoramic you will see the ghost images they will appear on image of the opposite side of its true anatomic location at a higher level so the left hearing here would be seen here at a higher level opposite side at a higher level similarly the right earring uh, the ghost image would be uh, of the right earring would be seen at higher level and the opposite side 
So the ghost images in the panoramic image with reference to particular anatomic structure, they are typically present on the opposite side and at a higher level due to the upward inclination of the X-ray beam. So the answer would be B. Uh, the next question, the reverse town projection, it is required for viewing. Well the, uh, well, the reverse town projection, it is a radiographic technique that is used in dental and maxillofacial imaging to visualize the posterior aspect of the condylar heads. And the neck. Condylar head. And neck of the TMJ. So it is used to identify the high fracture of the condylar head neck, condylar hypo or the hyperplasia or the intracapsular fracture of the TMJ. So the answer would be A. Uh, on OPG, a large radiopaque mass, it is overlying the crown of mandibular right uh, second molar. which has been displaced to the inferior border of mandible that would suggest a compound odontom. Odontoms, they are more frequent. Uh, so odontom, they are the most common type of odontogenic tumors and they are composed of dental tissue. Compound odontom, it consists of small tooth-like structure in the mass and it can cause displacement of the adjacent tooth. So answer is compound odontom. The SI unit for measuring radioactivity is, uh, well, the SI unit is the Becquerel. So remember that the SI unit is Becquerel, common unit is Curie. And one Curie, remember the value. Uh, and for absorbed dose, the SI unit is gray and the common, do uh, common unit is the red. The collimation of X-ray beam will reduce the formation of scattered radiation by reducing the size of the X-ray beam. So the uh, collimation, it is a technique that is used in radiography uh, that is used to limit the X-ray beam to specific well-defined area. So that will reduce the unnecessary radiations exposure to the adjacent tissues. Also, it will improve the image quality. So collimators, they are the devices that are used to restrict the size and shape of the X-ray beam. So let us uh, say a dentist, he wants to take a periapical X-ray of the single tooth like the mole. In this case, the dentist would use a collimator to adjust the X-ray machine setting. So this collimator would allow them to narrow, uh, narrow the X-ray beam to only cover the specific portion that is the specific tooth in the question. So that is achieved by adjusting the collimator setting. So the main function of collimator is to shape the X-ray beam to match the dimension of the tooth and surrounding structure. And it also ensures that the stray, uh, uh, the stray radiations they are minimized. So that is why your answer is reducing the size of X-ray beam. So reducing the size of X-ray beam and also improving the image quality. A child of seven years with no carious lesion in the mouth but undergo radiation therapy for salivary gland tumor in last month. Bite wing should be taken every. So in this case of child who has undergo radiation therapy for salivary gland tumor, bite wing radiograph it should be taken every six month. So frequent monitoring with the radiograph it is necessary to detect any potential radi uh, radiation and used changes in the oral tissue, including the potential dental anomalies or the complication. So that is why the answer is six month. It is a direct pick from McDonald. So that would be your answer. Which of following is most radio resistance? 
so the answer is the answer is skin so these are the red uh, relative radio sensitivity of various organs the skin it is relative radio resistance to other compared to other tissues it can tolerate high level of radiation exposure without significant damage so the highest level are with the lymphoid organs bone marrow intestines mucous membrane and whereas the lowest are with the, the optic lens and the muscles the wavelength of x ray photon it will depend upon the wavelength of the x ray photon it will depend upon the on the kilo voltage so when the kilo voltage it is increased it results in the production of x ray with the shorter wavelength and when kvp is decreased it uh, it results in production of x ray with the longer wavelength that is the fundamental uh, principle in the radiology uh, the recommended the recommended time period the time gap between the radiation surgery to avoid radio necrosis it's 4 to 6 months it is recommended to wait for this period to reduce the risk of radio necrosis and allow for the proper healing and recovery after the radiation therapy the risk of uh, risk of the osteo radio necrosis uh, is highest during 4 to 12 months after the radiotherapy a 40 year old female of african descent has a asymptomatic uh, 1.5 cm periapical radiolucent area in the molar with no loss of vitality or loss of lamina dura so that could be due to the focal cement osseous dysplasia so it is a benign fibrosis lesion that affects the individual of the african descent on radiograph it may appear appear radio opaque or radio lucent images with the poorly defined radiological borders uh coming to the next question which of following distance mark is correct for safe position during the exposure of radiograph it's 6 feet so this distance should be 6 feet and this angulation should be 90 to 135 degree that is important for your exam point of view so according to the position and distance rule in radiograph if no barrier is available the operator he should stand at least 6 feet away from the patient while making the exposure that will minimize the radiation exposure to operator uh, and still allow for the necessary radiographic images to be obtained the orbital floor it is best visualized in it is seen in the coronal coronal ct so here you can see the orbital uh, uh, floor fracture so coronal scans they are taken from front to back perspectives in the context of orbital imaging the coronal ct they can provide view of orbital floor and its structures the axial scans they are taken from top to bottom perspective uh, the sagittal ct scans they are taken from the side to side perspective uh, moving to the next question a periapical radiograph of mandibular premolar it repeats a sharp right angle bend of the periapical of the apical one third of the root so that would indicate easy question that is dilaceration so sharp bend of the curve in the root or the crown of form tooth it's the dilaceration thermoluminescence dosimetry it works on the principle of uh, the answer is a uh, the release of energy in the form of uh, the answer is uh, the thermoluminescence dosimetry works on the principle of Uh, the absorption of energy crystal when exposed to radiation so the, so uh, it works on the principle of the release of energy in the form of visible light from the crystals when they are exposed to radiation when certain crystals they are exposed to ionizing radiation they will absorb some of energy from the radiation so this energy they get trapped within the crystal so when the crystal is a heated 
and this energy is relieved in form of visible light. And the intensity of this light, it is proportional to the amount of radiation to which the crystal was exposed. So this is the thermoluminescent dosimetry. The formation of collimator, fun the function of collimator, uh, the function of collimator, the answer is to decrease the exposure. So collimator, they are used to limit the size and shape of X-ray beam to area that reduces the unnecessary radiation to the surrounding tissue and provide a better clarity. A patient with the routine OPG presented as a radiolucency below the mandibular canal and surrounded by well cortical border above the inferior border of mandible just angled just anterior to angle of mandible. Your diagnosis would be stephanosis. Well, the stephanosis cyst it is also known as it is also known as static bone cyst or or the lingual mandibular bone cyst. So it is developmental defect that occurs due to the inclusion of glandular tissue or adjacent to lingual surface of the mandible. So it is asymptomatic and it is seen on the radiographic exam examination. So your answer would be A. The minimum depth of lesion to be visible on radiograph it is 500 micrometer. So although radiograph may show caries that is not visible clinically, the minimum depth of detectable lesion on radiograph it should be uh, D. Moving to the next question, the silography cannot be used in which of condition? The answer would be the answer would be acute viral parotitis. So in case of acute viral parotitis, that is the inflammation of the parotid gland. Silography, we know it's a diagnostic imaging that is used to examine the salivary ducts and glands by injecting a radio opaque contrast medium into the ducts. So in case of acute viral parotitis, we know it is caused uh, by the contagious virus. So if you perform a silography uh, during an active infection, it can lead to potential spread of virus to the healthcare providers or other patient. The parotid glands, they are already swollen during the acute, paritis, acute viral parotitis. If you inject contrast into already inflamed and swollen glands, that can be very painful and may not yield clear results due to the existing swelling. So uh, during acute viral infection, the clinical diagnosis of mumps or viral parotitis, it is straightforward and does not require silography. The diagnosis, it is based upon the clinical symptoms, medical history and serological test. So that is why uh, we don't perform silography in case of viral parotitis. The cotton wool appearance on the skull, it is typical of osteitis deformance. So the, you can see this cotton wool appearance. It is seen in the package disease uh, due to the disorganized bone remodeling that lead to thickening and softening of bone that leads to cotton wool appearance. appearance. The next question, the inherit characteristic of radiograph are well the inherent characteristic of radiograph refer to the fundamental qualities that define the quality and diagnostic value of image so that that includes the definition contrast and the density so definition it is uh, definition it is also known as sharpness or resolution so that le uh, leads to clarity and distinctness of an object. So highly defined object uh, will allow to visualize the fine structures and borders. So well defined tooth structures within with clear outlines, they are essential for accurate diagnosis of the dental conditions. Second is the contrast. 
contrast it is variation in the uh, in the density between the different areas of radiograph so that refers to the difference in shade of gray from black to white so uh, so that is again essential and fundamental requirement of the radiograph the third is the density so that refers to the overall blackness or darkness of radiograph so if density it is too low the image may lack detail and appear too light making it challenge to identify the dental condition so the inherent characters they are definition contrast and the density that's your answer of choice the next question the most penetrating power is in the most penetrating power is in alpha in, in gamma rays so you can see this uh, the gamma rays they can penetrate paper aluminum and the lead whereas beta particles they would penetrate only paper and aluminum and the alpha particles they penetrate the uh, paper so most penetrating out of 3 is the gamma rays a child patient is very uneasy and not able to hold the x ray film then in case who can hold the film in patient mouth in case where the child it is very uneasy and not able to hold an x-ray film it is appropriate for the parents to hold the film in the patient's mouth provided they are given adequate protection with the leaded apron so this should be done as a last resort when correct film placement and retention they are not possible and it is generally discouraged for the office staff to hold the film in place to minimize their radiation exposure uh, the use of intensifying screen is to decrease the patient radiation so the use of intensifying screen in radiograph it's primarily to decrease the patient radiation intensifying screens they are the devices that would convert the x rays into the visible light and this visible light in turn can expose the screen film so by using intensifying screen the less x ray radiation is need, uh, needed uh, to create the image hence reducing the uh, radiation exposure to the patient which radiograph it is least helpful in detecting incipient caries it's the panoramic radiograph so they are less effective in detecting small caries lesion or the fine structures of marginal periodontium or the periapical disease compared to other like iopa occlusal and the bite ring that are more suitable for the caries detection the radio pay caries on the x ray films they are seen as as the answer is b so when x rays they interact with the silver bromide crystals on the film they reduce uh, these crystals making them insoluble so during the development and fixing procedure in the dark room the unexposed uh, silver bromide crystals they are removed leaving behind the reduced silver crystals so these uh, reduced silver uh, crystals they appear as a radio opaque area on the x ray film the occult disease it refers that so the occult disease refer to disease that presents no clinical sign or symptom it can be detected to through uh it can be detected through various diagnostic methods such as radiography even though it does not manifest noticeable clinical signs or symptom following organ is least radio sensitive to effect of radiations the answer would be muscle we have already discussed that chart please go through that chart is important for the entrance examination the panorama or opg uh, was developed by it was developed by hudson campula and dickson the cross occlusal radiograph they are used in well the cross radio occlusal radiograph they are used in uh, cellulithiasis so suppose there is a presence of slivery gland stones or calculi in the ducts 
so the cross occlusal radiograph they are used to visualize and diagnose the salivary gland stones in the duct a thin radio line opaque line running around the curvature of root in iopa it is the thin radio opaque line running across the curvature of root in iopa it's the lamina dura lamina dura it's it's a dense compact layer of bone that lines the tooth socket so it is an important diagnostic feature in assessing the health of sporting bone and presence of any pathology around the tooth so which radiographic technique requires three dimensional view of the alveolar bone defect it's the spiral uh, ct so that allows for the assessment of the alveolar bony defects and other anatomical structures in three dimensions eliminating the superimposition of overlying structures all of following would decrease film sharpness except the smaller grains in the film leads to increase increase film sharpness option a b c they can decrease the film sharpness the faster film has a large grain size leading to reduce sharpness single and double emulsions can contribute to increase film thickness all of following are considered as a safety measures regarding radiation exposure except the answer is Uh, the safety measure regarding the radiation exposure is use of low kvp is recommended so you uh, high kvp which produces image of low contrast also reduce the effective dose delivered per intraoral examination the blisters they are seen on film if so blisters blisters they can be caused due to the excess acidity of the fixer so cause is excess acidity of fixture or film is not agitated when film when immersed in fixer or due to the unbalanced processing temperature so remember this for your entrance exam and the correction technique how to correct them if the teeth they are in radiation field and the dose is greater than 5000 rads uh, periodont uh, periodontically involved teeth and teeth with periapical radiolucency should be extracted at least 2 weeks before the radiation therapy begins so it is recommended to extract the periodontal involved teeth uh, at least 2 weeks before the radiation therapy begins that is done to minimize the risk of complication and prepare the patient for the potential side effect of radiation therapy including the xerostomia and its associated dental care requirements which of following it is not a disadvantage of bisecting technique the answer is b which of following is a major disadvantage of paralleling technique the answer is c increasing the kvp cause the resultant x-ray to have a longer scale of contrast so increasing the kilo voltage that cause the resultant x-ray to have a longer scale of contrast well when the kvp is increased it results in production of x-ray with high energy and great penetration so that causes that leads to longer scale of contrast that means there is a wider range of shades of gray on radiograph that can capture a broad spectrum of tissue density the kvp controls the speed of it controls the speed of electrons the speed with which electrons travel from the filament of cathode to target of anode depends upon the potential difference between the two electrodes that is kilo voltage so the higher the kvp 
the faster the electrons will move resulting in production of x rays with the higher energy and greater penetration the x ray fixture contains all of following except accelerator so the fixing agent that is ammonium ammonium thiosulfate or sodium thiosulfate preservative is uh, sodium sulfite hardening agent potassium alum acidifier sulfuric acid so accelerator it's not found within the x ray it has a clearing agent antioxidant uh, acidifier stereoscopy refers to the other answer is c so the stereoscopy it provides the use of x ray film to provide a three dimensional picture it involves creating a three dimensional effect in a image by presenting two images uh, separately to left and right eyes of the viewer which of following investigation is of choice with the patient with the head injury so the answer is non contrast ct so this imaging modality it is used commonly in acute in the acute setting to assess the head injuries that will provide a detailed assessment of the brain structures in most emergency departments and it can quickly identify the intracranial hemorrhage fractures traumatic brain injuries among the following which of following is the best uh radiograph to examine the maxillary sinus it's the water's view the structure uh, so best is the to see the maxillary sinuses so you can see these are the maxillary sinuses uh this one is the coronoid process of the mandible this one is the frontal sinus clearly seen this one is the zygomatic arch that can be seen in the maxillary sinuses the best view for examining maxillary sinuses is the occipital mental view it is also known as water's view sub mento vertex view it is ideal for diagnosing fracture of the zygomatic arch so so this view will provide a clear visualization of the zygomatic arch it is also known as a zug handle view in in lateral cephalometric the distance at which pilum is placed from mid sagittal plane it's the 18 cm true about focal spot is uh, the heat generated per unit target length it is inversely proportional to the focal spot so this region refers to the effective focal spot and this one is the actual focal spot <sighs> more information of focal spot we have discussed in the subject wise lecture part cells that are most susceptible to radiation damage are those that are primitive in their differentiation the sa unit for the absorbed dose it's the uh, gray true about scintillator counter scintillator counter it works on the principle that the number of impulses generated it is directly proportional to amount of x ray uh, radiation that are incident on the scintillation material 